our farm, Shadyside Farms, was existent prior to probably 1946 is when it came into existence. In 2000, uh, we recognized we had a problem with the way we were doing things. We incorporated compost into our farming practices. Uh, by probably 2012, we were incorporating cover crops already into our fields, trying to figure out which ones were going to work, how they were going to work. And every year we see a little bit of difference, and it's all weather dependent, soil conditions, all those things make a difference on your farm, how it works in your soil. So, so when we start talking resiliency in cover crops, when you're, when you're looking in a row crop situation, you're covering the, the, the soil and you want to cover the soil um, because bare soil is just off gassing all the, the beneficials that we have out there. And, and every t and part of my system here is, is keeping that whole greenery out there but understanding how it works. When we have green soil, we actually can, or green cover out here, that's the cover. That's, that's healing the soil. It's, ban it's a bandage over a wound. When we take and till it, we are actually opening up the surf surface and it's a big old scratch on your skin on the earth. And we gotta heal that. And how do we heal that? But we gotta get the band-aid out there and the band-aid is cover crops. When you put the alfalfa in, and you put the grasses in, when you put the chicory in, the bird's foot trefoil, the clovers in, in we're, we're talking, I've got a 10-way mix that I plant in here because we're cover cropping. We put weeds and, and fine fungi and bacteria, and they're all there, and they're all holding and gluing that soil together. It's a glue system, and it's working. And then you, you take that out, and then it starts feeding the crop, all of a sudden you're not having to apply the nitrogen out there because you have put that nitrogen in as you fix this long term with the alfalfas, the clovers, and the bird foot trefoils. And then I can actually start harvesting from the air, which is 79% nitrogen, and dump that back into my crop. And then that starts feeding the soil. I don't have to buy nitrogen. It's a cost savings for me. And now I'm not using fossil fuels that are taking and harvesting, you know, harming my carbon system that's out here. Weed control. Pollinated? This is open pollinated Sorry, corn. I haven't seen um, the corn we happen to be standing in here is an open pollinated corn. Open pollinated corn, uh, the reason we didn't grow it is because we had disease issues that are out there uh, and we had to figure out what was going wrong. So um, as I look at my corn crop here, um, and we're not seeing those issues. It's that resiliency that we're putting into our soil system to, to feed that system that we don't end up with disease in here. So to, to understand my soil, we had a soil pit dug here. My soil, by the time you get down about three foot, you're gonna hit the water table. Um, we're gonna hit that gravelly water standing table. Moisture is there. But as you do the cover cropping system, you get a, uh, you get a natural pump working. Um, the bacteria and the fungi actually start water moving up towards those roots. And it, and it just kind of works on a natural system here. What I'm seeing here is I've got enough water in the soil that even when we go through a, a spat of four weeks of dry, we have moisture actually working up and down with the bacteria and the fungi feeding the system. So, you know, cover crops are, are good for the soil. They're also good for your animals, um, multi-uses in, in cover cropping.